The next artist we'll be interviewing is a local favorite, John Babbitt. John has been showing with us since he was a high school student at the age of 16. He was also an employee of the gallery for several years. Now, John is one of our top selling artists. He has become very popular among our clients and has sold over 700 paintings since he has been with us. John's artwork is known for being comical and bold, just like his personality. He uses his pieces as a journal, painting what he thinks about and sees every day. His artwork always makes us laugh, and we love having him a part of our Art One camera. So hey, this morning we are interviewing John Babbitt. How old were you when you started creating? Um, I would say uh, when it came to painting, actual painting and not just drawing, but like deciding to like step away from pencils and moving on to paint was about 15 to 16 years old. Cause like, I just decided like, you know, like drawing's cool, but I need to like take the next step. And that's, that's pretty much the age 16, I think. What high school was it that you were uh, I, I went to Westwood High School over in Mesa yeah. and I had a phenomenal art teacher at the moment. He's not there anymore. He passed away, but he really, he he really pushed me to. Uh, you need to like your style's good. You don't need to be like everyone else. Like, and that was really important to me. Like what he he said to me. Working at the gallery, because you started at Tempe Marketplace just showing, and then you ended up helping us out there, and then you ended up working here for several years. At, yeah, at least four. Yeah. Do you think that working with clients and seeing how galleries work, do you think that changed how you paint or create? It is probably one of the most important things that ever happened to me in the sense that it taught me how I, I could listen to what people said about my own artwork without them knowing it was me. They're, like I could interact with clients, kind of like it, it taught me more than probably any school probably could teach you like it was it was priceless it was it, you couldn't you couldn't pay for that kind of knowledge to like kind of meet and greet because I mean I was horrible with talking and communicating and it, it forced me to interact so how do you think your styles changed over the years painting is what I've actually worked to like it like the year over the years it changes yes and that happens naturally I can't really it, it's always every year's like you you can almost tell what year it is by the work itself, yeah. which is kind of weird and really cool. But I I mean I can't really answer that question. It's a hard one. It's just natural. Like it's not something I really I try to do. Yeah, and then describe your um how you paint or your creative process. Do you sketch first? Do you like? No, no. You know, the the more I try to plan it out, it never works out. Whenever everyone asks this question, I always kind of like the best answer for it is the painting kind of paints itself and I'm kind of the instrument of the like the tool. It's weird. Like and that's a weird thing to think about. But I start with maybe a minimal like um, amount of ideas in my head and then I start with those. If they don't work out, I use them as layers for maybe the next idea. And over over the countless layers, I kind of pull a painting out of it and it just works. And I know when it's finished, it, and that's weird to say because like that was the hardest part to learn is when a painting is finished. But over practice, you know when when that, that painting is done. And it, it just took time. You know, have you ever gotten mad and just washed, whitewashed over everything? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I cover paintings all the time. And, and you know, you've seen, you're like, don't cover that. And I'm like, well, it's covered. <laughs> like the piece behind you, I know you were saying just before we started recording that you had just started it this morning. Hey, was there something that happened this morning or you just like, oh, I need something quick for this video? Uh, pretty much for the video, but at the same time, like the sub when you ask about subject matter, it is um about things going on pretty much, but it's kind of a, not even a monthly, kind of like within that year. Like you said, like styles change within the year. So do my subjects. Like I get stuck in ideas and subjects within that year. So you remember when I, I did my boat stuff, it was just boats, yeah. boats, boats, boats. And it was like that for like a couple of years and, and I'll get stuck on it. And then like maybe in next year, I'll, I'll have a different subject that I get stuck on in. Like just how I, I get obsessed with an idea and a subject and I can't move forward until I release it all and then it's to the next subject, you know? 
Yeah, and the, there is one thing though that has carried through that I've noticed, and it's the origamis. So yes, about your little brother, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my brother, he's like, uh, he's 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 really important in my life, and he always he was obsessed with origami, and I always liked, like, literally he would he just make the most intense, crazy origamis and. I, I really wanted to hit my artwork because I was just so impressed by it. And not only that, like those, those little house buildings I put in my paintings, like that was like, you know, like that's a thing that's never left my artwork either. And that was always about kind of like the rebuilding of art one. And that was always really important in my subject of my art too. And I could never kind of like stop painting those. I always liked them a lot. I have one of your buildings that you tattooed yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were talking about your brother, and there's something interesting. You grew up in Mesa, in an area called Lehigh, which was, um, when John grew up back there, there, it was mostly just farming in like one acre areas. So you grew up, you were the second oldest of eight kids, right? Yeah, second oldest, eight kids, yep. Yep, so John's had to fend quickly for himself over the years. <laughs> uh, I probably, I mean, I probably didn't have to fend as hard as some of the younger ones, but you know, like being the second oldest, you know, you, you have a lot of responsibility, that's for sure. <laughs> Is there anything right now that's currently inspiring you? I mean, are you inspired by like the craziness that's happening right now, or is that kind of just put on the back burner for later? That uh, the craziness is back burner, but it because of the craziness. Right now, I'm really obsessed with gardening, and in my artwork right now, it's like a lot of organic and plants, and I can't help it. Like, I really can't. Like, I right now, I'm obsessed with gardening, and in my artwork right now, is a lot of things doing with plants. And it's, like I said, I can't, I can't help it. Like, it's once I once I get an obsession, I can't stop. So, do you ever get uninspired, where you just like, oh crap, I've had enough of everything. I just, I can't even think of what to paint next. I, I get more uninspired than I get inspired sometimes. So it's just you know you get that writer's block. You you get you get stuck on something, and sometimes like yeah you can muscle and push through, but sometimes you just it's really hard. You know like every artist can understand that. Like if they say that they don't get writer's block, I I don't know that that's a robot or something. Like it's <laughs> you know. It's just sometimes you get writer's block. It's normal, you know. Like you just got pat. Just don't let it affect you too long. Just push through eventually. How long? It was the longest time you've gone without painting, just out of frustration. I I would like to say a week. I would hate to know that I didn't paint longer. Like gone without longer than a week. I've always known you. If you're not painting, you're aggravated. Yeah, no, it it, it messes with me mentally. It, like. I'll, people can notice when I'm in like a bad mood because like I'll just be like I didn't I didn't like pretty much it's it's my work so it's kind of like I didn't work and do the right thing you know so you're not getting a picture yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and then also um, you build all your own stretcher bars and uh, stretch all your own paintings and if not yeah yours um, has that helped you by doing that? And, and did you learn or did, by yourself or did you go to YouTube? I know a lot of our artists are always questioning, man, I'm trying to get rid of this expense by buying them. How do yeah, I well, for me, when I get that writer's block, the thing I can do is I can go build stretcher bars and I can build my own painting. So when I, I really am stuck on something and I can't move forward, then you have that next step to like build your own things. And that really has helped me through the years because when I can't really focus on the artwork, I can go focus on getting ready to make the artwork. So you're kind of like, it's it works together. And the way I learned over the years, yeah, I've done YouTube videos, but the best way to do it, okay, watch a YouTube video, get the basics down, and then just start doing it. And you've seen my stretcher bars of the years. They were crap, but over the years, it took me years to get good at it. And eventually they become great. So don't get discouraged just because the, 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 the stretcher bars, the, the stretching of the canvas weren't good. It, you took the first step and then you have to take the next steps and just keep doing it, keep doing it, just like painting. The only way to get good at painting is to make another painting, 
make another painting and just keep going, you know? So for people that were your age, um, like when you approached us at Tempe Marketplace, you had just turned 16, I think. For those that are young and in the same boat you kind of were back then, what do you have for ideas or inspiration that, that might help some of the younger and some of the older that are just getting started? Just paint and just keep painting and don't be afraid of showing people your artwork. And if, if people don't like it, it's important to get thick skin. Like, don't be upset when someone says they don't like your work, you know? Like, when I worked at the gallery, I heard people be like, whoever's painting this, you know? Like, he must be crazy. <laughs> like, like, he must like, what is wrong with this guy? And I would just like, uh-huh, yeah, what's wrong with this guy? And like, they don't even know that I'm the painter. Like, you gotta get some thick skin and just continue doing it, continue doing it. John, John, I think that's probably about it. I just wanted people to know a little bit about you. All right, I love you. All right, love you too, I'll talk to you later. Well, thanks for doing this with me, I, and uh, hopefully I don't embarrass you. Well, hopefully I didn't embarrass you. Uh, you never embarrass me. I, I'm leaving, bye. Hey, love you, bye. bye.